Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. So, sugars? You've probably seen it on labels, heard it debated in documentaries, or maybe even wondered, is really that bad for you? And what's the actual difference between the sugar in your soda and the sugar in your pantry? Today, we're diving into one of the most talked about ingredients in the food world, high fructose corn syrup, and how it compares to regular sugar. Well, get comfy, because we're about to break it all down in a way that's easy to understand. No chemistry degree required. Right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What is high fructose corn syrup? And how is it different from the white sugar you spoon into your coffee? Sugar the kind most of us think of, is called sucrose. It comes from sugar cane or sugar beets and is made up of two smaller sugar molecules, glucose and fructose, in a 50-50th split. Pretty straightforward. Now, high fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, is made from corn, just like it sounds. But here's where it gets interesting. Corn naturally contains starch, and through processing, that starch is turned into glucose. Then, a portion of that glucose is enzymatically converted into fructose. The result? A syrup that contains both glucose and fructose, just like sugar, but not always in a perfect 50 50 ratio. There are different versions of HFCS, but the most common in soft drinks is HFCS 55, which has roughly 55% fructose and 45% glucose. So when it comes down to it, both regular sugar and HFCS are made of the same two molecules, just in slightly different ratios and from different sources. So why does HFCS even exist in the first place? Well, in the 1970s, sugar prices started rising due to global market changes. At the same time, scientists in the U.S. figured out how to turn cheap, abundant corn into a sweet liquid. Enter high fructose corn syrup. It quickly became a hit with food manufacturers. HFCS was liquid, which made it easy to mix into beverages. It was stable, which meant a longer shelf life. And most importantly, it was cheap, especially in the U.S where corn is heavily subsidized. By the 1980s, HFCS had become the go-to sweetener in sodas, snacks, baked goods, and even things like ketchup and salad dressing. Now let's talk taste. Some people say that HFCS is sweeter than regular sugar, and technically, fructose is sweeter than glucose. Since HFCS 55 contains more fructose than table sugar, it can taste a little sweeter, especially in cold beverages. That's one reason soda companies liked it. They could use a little less and still get the same flavor punch. But here's the twist. If you travel to countries like Mexico, you might notice Coca-Cola tastes different. That's because they still use cane sugar instead of HFCS. Some people swear it tastes better, cleaner, or smoother. Others don't notice a difference at all. So whether one tastes better than the other is really a personal thing. Here's where things get more sciencey, but stick with me because this is the heart of the debate. When you eat glucose, your body uses it for energy pretty efficiently. It goes into your bloodstream, triggers insulin, and fuels your muscles and brain. Fructose, on the other hand, is processed mainly by your liver. When consumed in large amounts, fructose can get converted into fat. Over time, that could potentially lead to fatty liver disease or insulin resistance. But remember, regular sugar is also half fructose. So from a biological standpoint, both HFCS and sugar contain fructose, and both can have similar effects on your body if consumed in excess. In fact, most scientists agree that the health risks are less about the type of sweetener and more about the total amount of sugar we consume. 
Okay, now for the elephant in the room. Is HFCS worse than sugar? In the early 2000s, HFCS got vilified. It became the face of America's obesity epidemic. Documentaries, diet books, and health gurus all pointed fingers at this corn-based sweetener as the culprit behind rising rates of diabetes and obesity. But when researchers dug deeper, the truth was more complicated. Studies have shown that when consumed in similar amounts, HFCS and sugar have nearly identical effects on things like blood sugar, triglycerides, and insulin. What really matters is how much added sugar you're getting overall, regardless of the source. So if you're chugging soda, eating lots of processed snacks, and drowning your breakfast in sugary syrup, it doesn't really matter whether the label says HFCS or cane sugar. Your body sees a flood of glucose and fructose either way. It's interesting how HFCS became the bad guy, while sugar got a bit of a pass. Marketing plays a big role here. You'll see no high fructose corn syrup on everything from juice boxes to granola bars, as if that makes them automatically better. But some of those products still contain a ton of added sugar, just in a different form. So don't be fooled by the labels alone. Sugar, in all its forms, should be used in moderation. If you're looking for a verdict, here it is. Neither high fructose corn syrup nor sugar is good for you in large amounts. They're both sources of empty calories, they both spike your blood sugar, and they both contain fructose. The real issue isn't which one is worse, it's how much of either you're eating. Our modern diet is filled with added sugars, often hidden in places you wouldn't expect, like pasta sauce, yogurt, or even bread. If you can reduce your overall intake of sweetened foods, regardless of whether they contain HFCS or sugar, your body will thank you. So there you have it. The real difference between high fructose corn syrup and sugar isn't as big as the food fight might suggest. They're both sweet. They both contain fructose and glucose. And they're both best consumed in moderation. Next time you're reading a label or choosing a snack, don't just ask, does it have HFCS? Ask, how much sugar is in this overall? That's the better question. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.